Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Secure After Dark podcast. I am once again joined by the one and only, the great Phil Wiley, uh, and I am your host, Tanner Shin, with uh, Alias. Uh, Phil is one of our newer additions. You have uh, probably realized, you've, by the time this comes out, you'll have been here for a minute now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I got to quit saying you're, you're newer to the team. Yeah. Uh, so, what you might not know about us is we're both av- avid fitness people. We both have a long history and in, in fitness stuff we can talk about. You're just telling me about Red Team Fit and some of the stuff Kennedy was doing. You want to kind sure. of go on that? Yeah, yeah kind of like the be- the beginning of the pandemic when everyone was, was on lockdown. Uh, Dave Kennedy, he's been working out for years, but he found this new trainer. And they kind of started this movement that was like hashtag, hashtag Red Team Fit on Twitter. And the cool thing about it was they got a lot of people interested in working out that weren't working out. They're a lockdown board. But the nice thing was is it just brought about people – uh, losing weight, lifting weights, running, eating better, doing things to be healthier since they didn't have anything else to do with their time, which is a, was a good side effect, one of the silver linings to the pandemic. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. I think a lot of people went both ways in the pandemic too. Yeah. Because you had a lot of people who they, oh, my gym's closed down. I'm just going to turn into a couch potato. And I knew some people that that happened to, but I also knew some people who were like, I'm bored. I'm going to take up running. Yeah. And so, yeah, that was, that was definitely really cool. Uh, well, so I I am a, a bit of a recluse. Uh, Alias has made me be more social and meet their social media really specifically. I was not very active on social media, so I missed out on most of that, unfortunately. It's really been a good thing because I've, I've met cool people, I've learned stuff like that, which is like, you know, that's where my my, my interests intersect, and I, and I love that. Um, but, yeah, so it's, it's cool to hear about that, and I think that's something that, we really got to try to get people into. I think that uh, whenever you're physically fit, everything else falls into place. And maybe that's super cheesy and super corny and everything. But I think e- even if you know you're not some you know jack bodybuilder dude, uh, I think if you just go to the gym and just kind of have that that stress relief and have that that kind of you know health aspect to your life, I think everything's better. Yeah. I think that you know if I'm I notice whenever I'm, I'm traveling and say um, I'm out on the road and I, I work out when I can in hotel gyms, we stay where we can. A lot of the times you're in pretty remote towns and sometimes there's not really any hotel gyms. I will, you know, work out with hotel room furniture and do push-ups and whatever I can do. And I, if I can't get a good workout in, I feel like by the end of the week, I'm slow. I feel like I'm just not myself. And I don't, I don't know if I'm, I'm maybe alone in that. But I think that uh, I can't even imagine going back to a point where I'm not. I know, like whenever I've had injuries, I'm just it's it's just such a rapid decline. Even mm-hmm. even for me, I feel like mentally. So I think I'm always probably annoyingly so trying to get people to, yeah, man, you should go to the gym. You want to? I can help you out with a workout program and stuff. And, uh, we found out we had a lot of that stuff in common. Yeah. And uh, so I guess let's uh, we want to dive into some of your history. We can dive sure. into some of mine. On, on yeah, but before story. getting into that, just kind of to add to your comments. You know, you have to consider most of the people listening are people that are in cybersecurity or IT, and our brains are very, very valuable tools in what we do. And you got to consider your body is a life support system for that. So if you don't eat properly, you're not taking care of your properly yourself properly. You're not able to think as clearly. And if you're not eating right, certain kind of diets can really give you a lot of mental fog. Uh, you've had like too much sugar or carbs at lunchtime. You come back and you want to sleep. It's hard to think clearly, so I think there's really a lot of importance to that. So kind of to get into where I got started out is I got started out lifting in middle school uh, because during off-season athletics, after football season, we would go and lift in the weight room, so we just go lift. And I was able to lift a pretty decent amount. It was just on a universal machine, one of the weight machines, but I was able to bench like 250 pounds on it. And... Uh, the thing was, I was a chubby kid. And I didn't look like it. No one believed me that I lifted what I lifted. So over the summer, I watched uh, Pumping Iron, and that got me yeah. motivated to lift because I wanted to look like that I could lift the weight too. And it kind of worked out well for me because getting into lifting helped me lose the weight. And I found probably one of the first things I was good at was lifting. The first sport I was really good at and eventually got into powerlifting. But I uh, got started at around 15 years old. Right before my 15th birthday in 1980, and then uh, 1984, my senior year, I got into powerlifting, did my first powerlifting meet. So my very first 
powerlifting meet, weighing 210 pounds, a bench press 350 pounds. My very first meet. Heck yeah. I uh, had the ha highest second total of the meet. And there was a guy that was a weight class above me that was like 250, 275 or something. And and I was able to outlift him on a two of the three lifts. And so that's, and it was interesting too, because uh, I'd share with you before I got shot. And so whenever I, I got shot, I was laying down on the ground thinking I might die. Uh, I was so competitive back then. I was worried about my bench press record getting passed up. I thought these guys go think Phil was nothing. You know, we're, we're bench pressing this now. That guy was nothing. And that was, <laughs> that was what I was worried about. <laughs> no, I totally understand. I've been there and that, that competitive mentality. I mean, you wake up and I'm not saying I'm not even condoning or promoting yeah. people be like this, but I have been there where you, you wake up and the first thing you think about is, all right, got to get my meals in so I can make sure I get a good lift today. Yeah. Or do you, you know, you go to bed. It's the last thing you think about. I got to go to bed early so I can get a good sleep because I got deadlifts tomorrow. Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can get, you can get obsessive about it and it's maybe not the best thing, but yeah. I've been there. But yeah, it does teach you what well, it's really driven me to be more goal oriented. Oh yeah. Stuff too. So that's carried over to my pr professional life. But yeah, as far as lifting and stuff like that. So I've been competing in powerlifting since 1984. Uh, I won the drug free world championships, AWPC, uh, world championships in 2007 with the open division. Uh, the guy that was runner up to me was like 10 years younger than me. And so I was like in my early forties when I did that. Uh, I've got several records that still stand like in, uh, the USAPL and the WABDL, uh, Federation. So I got some records still stand there with, with the USAPL is because the, the, the weight classes were retired for these newer weight classes and more aligned with like Olympic lifting and they were. They kept doing things to try to get into the Olympics and change it to be more similar. I heard part of it is for the drug testing, that they're right. doing a higher percentage of drug testing if you have less weight classes. So, so yeah, so my last powerlifting competition was in 2019, but my best lifts are 573 on the squat, 407 on the bench, and 705 on the deadlift. As far as a raw deadlift, just a belt. With a deadlift suit, I've done 722 pounds. With a squat suit, 848, and 722 in a deadlift suit, and 423 with a bench press shirt. What was your weight at that point? At that point, I was staying around 242 to 250. So when I won the world championships, I was a 242. Some cases I missed uh, weigh in. So there's a competition. My one of my best all time power up to meets was actually in Oklahoma City back in 2000, 2009 is where I did the, the raw 705 pound deadlift. Uh, I just barely missed the 242 pound class by like a pound or two and had to compete in 275s. But fortunately, I still still pulled off the win. The guy I was competing against had a monster squat. But once I got into the bench, we were close to even or maybe he was still a little bit ahead of me. But then when going in at the deadlift, I was able to to pull it off nice heck yeah yeah and then you also did the professional wrestling yeah stuff. yeah yeah so that's i mean that's a very physical sport i mean yes. you know i mean you have to be physically fit even for not even just you have to be jacked for the show right? yeah i mean yeah that's so uh, so that's definitely been a cool part of your life um i mean yeah personally i just i graduated high school uh 17 years old I was 127 pounds. I'm, I'm six foot two. Couldn't be much more of a string bean than I was. My dad was like, please go to the gym. You're way too skinny. <laughs> and I was like, all right, fine. So I started going to the gym, fell in love with it. Basically just hammered on at it until I was 275 um, and ended up, you know, trimming back way down and getting to like 235, 240. But I mean, yeah, I doubled my body weight and then some i mean it was just that was the only thing you know it was it stuff at the time security stuff my career and like lift that was it uh you know i went on i i i owned a powerlifting gym for a while with some guys um i ended up doing a lot of personal training stuff as, as a side gig and i love that i got really into bodybuilding um and so it's always kind of been a been a thing for me you know some uh, some injuries have shrunk my my size quite quite a lot but it's all right. We'll get it back, you know, eventually. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I still stay active, still stay lifting, still stay healthy. Um, and I'm glad I'm actually, that was, that was, that was a kind of a blessing in disguise a little bit. It broke a lot of the, uh, the obsessiveness that comes with actual bodybuilding. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, I, w- I don't eat out a very, only certain places I would eat out at cause they could do my food right. I'm weighing my food and like, you can get into like eating disorder territory. Oh, I can see. Like, it's not, it's not good. Um, so I'm glad I don't really do a lot of that anymore, but I still, I still stay healthy still stay lifting, you know, absolutely love it to death. I did some powerlifting as well. Uh, I actually, when I started getting into powerlifting, it was about the time I opened the gym and I didn't have time for meets running because I was still working a full-time job mm-hmm. as well as running the business. And it was, it was, it was really tough. It was really tough. Um, so I, uh, I don't unfortunately have any records. But, you know, I probably wouldn't have set them anyway. <laughs> you, know, you never know because one of the things that's interesting about competing, and that's the thing about me in the gym, when I went to a meet, I would lift a lot more competing against someone even compared to in the gym and I don't know what that was about because when I did my very first power to meet in high school it's like I went to the meet and I did ex- a lot better than I expected I would and then I've got a lot of people I know from the gym they'll say I don't see how you lift what you do in the gym and lift as much as you do in person it's just like when I get really psyched up I'm able to lift so much more and it really takes me really getting psyched up to lift the heavier weights so whenever I'm working out in the gym, I'm not lifting as heavy and I don't need to just more focusing on volume because I really don't like going below three reps. And a lot of times I like staying around five reps and maybe going higher sometimes, but you know, it's just so much risk for injury in the gym going max weights and one rep max. And, and it's kind of not worth the risk because one of the things I've done in the past is get injured in the gym lifting. And especially when you're doing something heavier, there's more opportunity for injury. Absolutely. I've, I've uh, had some incredible opportunities to train with some of the, the, the best in the world in, in powerlifting. And um, that's a common thing with them as well. They'll yeah. max out on something, you know, you hit their, their one, two rep max. One lift once a month, mm-hmm. maybe. I mean, the majority of the work is, is volume work, yeah. really targeted accessory work. And most people aren't, aren't doing a lot of that stuff. Well, we don't want to get too drilled into to powerlifting, you know. We got it. We're, we're trying to, we're, we're here trying to, we thought let's, let's talk to some people about how great lifting is. And then we'll just rap about powerlifting for two hours. But, so. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, uh, one of the things that I thought was super cool is um, you don't meet a lot of people in InfoSec that are heavy into that side of the lifting stuff. I will say I have been noticing more. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you're talking about how, you know, uh, they're pushing the, the, uh, we hack health and stuff like that, or what is the yeah. hashtag? Uh, Red Team Fit. Red Team Fit. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that type of stuff I think is is super awesome, and I think uh, we should be doing whatever we can to get you know involved with it and get more into it to try and try and promote like just getting our getting our people healthy. You know, yeah. I, I I feel like that's a you know I like to you know go out go out for for dinner with with you know friends and you know I'm, I'll eat pizza and we'll have some beer whiskey or whatever but like you know 90% of the time I'm eating chicken rice broccoli you know eggs yeah. steak and I try to eat whole foods and keep everything healthy and count my calories and I hit the gym you know five days a week and yeah yeah so so um I guess let's uh, one thing I have trouble with I could ask you about you been doing it for longer is traveling do you, do you find it hard traveling to uh to keep to any kind of a semblance of a routine yeah especially when it comes to competing because back when i was first consulting i was still competing pretty frequently at powerlifting so i'd have to find gyms when i was out of town and you know usually a gym and a hotel even some of the better gyms really didn't cut it because there's really no place to squat unless you're lucky and they got a smith machine that's best case but you know just get anything yet i think the biggest thing that people have to look at is not over complicated and don't be overly strict. If you can just get some kind of workout in, even if you can do, only do push ups, you go to a gym at a hotel and they got dumbbells, there's so much things you can do with that. I mean, you can even do like things like goblet squats and, mm-hmm. and even deadlifts with the dumbbells, and there's all sorts of things you can do. So I think it's a matter of just getting the activity in, trying to be at a really high level all the time. I think it more, is more difficult than just trying to focus on health. And you don't have to go crazy with it to help your health. You don't have to be 
an athlete or powerlifter or whatever, a uh, triathlete or whatever, just or marathon runner or whatever, just getting in the 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 effort, just getting the steps in. I mean, just walking alone does phenomenal things because, like during the pandemic, when I didn't have access to the gym, I ended up getting leaner, and I was walking like twice a day. And my diet wasn't the best. Uh, I think I skipped breakfast, and then we'd have like lunch, and it was usually a carb heavy because my wife is an endurance athlete, so she was constantly riding her bike. So we'd have higher carb, and then she'd fix like dessert for dinner. And we were walking <laughs> twice a day, and I got leaner from yeah. it. So a lot of times, just just the walking alone, uh, getting some kind of lifting in because it's going to help your bone density. And it's really kind of uh, helps you age better because for me, I'm 58 years old. And when I look at people my age, usually they they look older. And a lot of it I attribute to is just lifting weights all these years. I mean, since since I was 15 years old, since 1980, lifting weights at hives. Because as we get older, you know, we, get, we produce less growth hormone, less testosterone. And when those things reduce, that's kind of aging, ages us. And that's where we're kind of lucky as guys compared to women. We have the hormonal advantage. You know, we're able to, we're going to the gym headed. We're able to slow down the aging a little more, whereas it does help women as well. But it just, it just kind of helps slow the aging process when you're, when you're lifting. Because Absolutely. I forget what they say, how much your testosterone declines over the years, like starting like at 30. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. And that's why, you know, TRT and stuff yeah. is so so popular these days. I know uh, I used to go to this gym and it was like the oldest gym in Oklahoma City. I loved it. They shut down. They moved to another location, unfortunately. But um, that gym had been there since the '70s, and all the equipment was original. And it was it was it was just a great gym. But a lot of the people had been going there since the '70s. Yeah. And there was a lot of dudes you go there, and they you know they're they're sitting there, they're still benching. You know they're not doing heavy, but they're doing 135, and they look great. And yeah. They start talking to you, and they're like, "I'm 85 years old," and you're like, "You're what?" <laughs> and you know <laughs> you just see these guys, and your jaw would drop that they they they're they're in there every single day lifting weights, and it's like, well, there's a pretty obvious thing that they all have in common, right? Yeah. You know these these older guys who are in great shape and everything. Is, this may be going way back, and some people may not, may be too young to remember, but Jack LaLanne, because he was like in fitness like way long ago. When I was a kid, like in the 70s, he had his old television show where he just did calisthenics. And this guy used to do some strongman type stuff. It was like something where he'd hold a boat while swimming and some different things. So he was kind of more <laughs> on the strongman spectrum and yeah. stuff. But, uh, you know, he's doing all that. And the guy lived to be a very old age, but he really practiced eating healthy. One of the things he really just kind of cut out is unnecessary carbs like white flour and, and sugar, focused on fruits and vegetables along with, he wasn't vegetarian, but, uh, you know, getting plenty of protein and exercise. And, and that guy, you know, stayed pretty healthy for most of his life. You know, I think it's funny how there's all these diet trends and they all kind of they start off with something and then they kind of morph into something like how keto was popular and then it yeah. kind of came into paleo and then it kind of came into like other things. And they all, every time there's a diet trend, they end up at the same place. And it's like, eat whole foods. Yeah. Get your protein in. Eat your carbs to a reasonable but reasonable amount from reasonable sources, mostly from, you know, high fiber sources and things like that. And every, they all come back to the same place. Mm -hmm. It's like, don't go over your calories. Your, yeah. your calories is what matters and eat the good whole foods. Like yeah. everything comes back to that. Yeah. And every, every couple of years you see some new big diet trend come out, even like how carnivore and like, you know, I think carnivore is doing a lot of things right. And it's good for some people who have like autoimmune diseases and stuff. But for the most part, it's like, yeah, you're making your life harder. Yeah. Like I'm all for eating lots of meat. Don't get me wrong. I'm a, I'm an avid hunter. I eat lots of meat, but I mean, when it comes down to it, like you're having to force all kinds of organ meat and stuff to get your macro micronutrients and like just, just eat a balanced diet and your life is easy. Yeah. And it seems like that would be too easy to get burnt out on that for a while because I mean, even, even though meat's good and this is all you eat, eventually you're going to kind of get burnt out at eating the same thing. So I tried it actually. Um, I think I did it for two or three months was all I made it. Honestly, I felt like crap. I did not, I, I had, it was mostly in the gym that I felt like crap. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't feel super good throughout the day, not like I normally do. I felt, I just felt a little bit less than normal. But in the gym, I was just, my lifts were going down. 
yeah. didn't have good pumps and everybody's like, oh, you have to acclimate to it. Like two months in, I'm like, how, how long do I have to acclimate yeah. to this? And I was eating liver every day and yeah. I was eating all kinds of fatty. I was spending more on food too. Yeah. Because I was eating lots of ribeye and, and you know, I, I bought a quarter of a cow and I was eating, you know, like whole lot, you know, grass fed good yeah. stuff. And, you know, I love steak. I wasn't complaining about that, but I, I wasn't feeling very good and wasn't having very good gym progress and stuff. And so, yeah, that was, uh, I did try it. I yeah. did try it. You know, I was like, uh, okay, you know, I had some friends that were swearing by it. I was like, I don't believe you, but I'll try it. But, you know, that brings up a good point. You know, there's not one size fits all. So, I mean, some people need more carbs. Some people can do well without it. Some people need less carbs. Some people need more. So I'm sure a lot of yours was just because you weren't getting carbs. And I am a very yeah. carb heavy diet person mm -hmm. when I'm, when I'm training hard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'll train hard. I'll have, um, you know, a hundred grams of carbs a couple hours before I'll have, you know, 40 grams of, of like fast carbs, like sugars right before I work out, like right before I go drive to the gym, work out, come back another hundred grams of carbs. I mean, that's not what I eat. That's, I eat more than that throughout the day too. That's yeah. just, that's just pre post workout. And that's how I have a good workout and recover well. And so, yeah, I'm, and there's, there's a lot of credence to that probably is some people are probably just not dependent yeah. on having that, that kind of carbs for that recovery. And, you know, maybe I, I train like an idiot and I do too much volume and I know that's true, but, um, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. That's what makes it fun though. If you like the people like to experiment, experiment with, with meaning what diet works for you, what type of lifting works for you. Cause I've done, I've done like traditional periodization or progressive overload and I've done block periodization. I've done West, the West side method. I've done five through one, but it's just working with all those different methods. You kind of finally figure out what works for you. Absolutely. For me, it's more reps, sets and reps, more of a power building routine that works best for me than just going really heavy. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I, I kind of, I kind of the same way where I do a lot of periodization, but with a lot of volume, mm -hmm. right? I do, I do a lot of volume, a lot of periodization. And I, I, I openly admit I do too much volume because I like to work out. Yeah. That, that's a lot of it is like, I don't want to be in the gym for 30 minutes. I want to be in the gym for as long as I can without getting super worn out because yeah. I love it. I'm, I'm weird like that. I get it. Yeah. That's not for everybody, but also, you know, I would like to say for anybody, any, if anybody's made it this far, you know, we haven't, we haven't bored them with powerlifting talk yet. <laughs> um, I would like to say, uh, it's not, you don't just have to lift, like, no. like go run, go hike, go climb. Yes. Um, you know, man, um, I've known people who have taken up climbing without even lifting. I know people who then later on got into lifting to improve their climbing, which mm -hmm. is great to do. Um, but just started getting in incredible shape. Yeah. I mean, doing, you know, physical feats that I absolutely could not as, you know, a gym rat. And it's just like, you know, there's, there's lots of ways you can, you can get fit. It doesn't yeah. have to be me head in the gym lifting. Yeah. And yeah, some of the best advice I'd seen, uh, there's the, the, uh, I'm trying to think of the, this one diet they come out with that they came out similar to paleo, but they were talking about one of the days as you would have days of active play, just something you're doing fun that, you know, if you like to surf, if you like to skate or whatever, you know, play football, different sports, just put in different days where you're just doing things that are fun to do. And you just, you can do it for hours and not even really think about it. You're getting in all this activity. So I used to do that when I was personal training is I would prescribe days of active rest, mm -hmm. what we call okay. it. So, yeah. so typically if you had somebody training for four days a week or five days a week, you'd have one day of rest and one day of active rest and you'd kind of spread that apart you're like on your rest day like you know it's the day after you did a heavy deadlift or something like go veg out rest but on your active rest it's like if you're in like a, you're trying to lose weight you're trying to get leaner you're, and everything like that go on a hike go do something you like you know and i uh personally uh, w uh with my significant other we were playing pokemon go and uh you know that was a whole lot of fun right whoever's pokemon go but I remember I was like, cool, this is, this is my active rest days. We'll go walk, you know, seven, eight miles doing Pokemon Go all night. And like, you know, you're just walking around town yeah. all night. And that's, you know, we're having fun. We're doing cool stuff. But if you look at it, you're like, I just burned six, 700 calories walking around for five hours. Like, it's, it can definitely be uh, something that's, that's great to do. I think more people should incorporate that. Yeah, and I think a lot of people need that more from the, with the work from home jobs. Cause I could tell the difference cause I have type two diabetes and when I'm 
at a conference and constantly moving around all day, I can see a big difference compared to when I'm at home sitting in a desk all day. Absolutely. Uh, overall energy levels? Or... Yes. And just the way my blood glucose levels are better. Yeah, yeah I bet. Blood pressure is better. I bet, yeah. No, I think so as well. I mean, there's there's probably a stress relief component to that as well. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're getting out of the house, you're kind of disassociating from whatever you're stuck working on, you're, you're, you're getting your physical exercise in. I think it's, yeah, it's overall good. So what, what's the message? Go out, have fun. That's, yeah, just, <laughs> just move. <laughs> yeah, just move. Go out, have yeah. fun. That's fun. Yeah, not just video games. I love video games. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Not enough time <laughs> to play video games all the time. I wish there was. But uh, but yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, anything we wanted to, wanted to cover? Talking about, uh, hey, people go out and get healthy? Yeah, I just think making sure that you're trying to eat healthy and uh, I think supplements help. I think you can... Oh, yeah, I think that for me, I just make sure that I get plenty of vitamin C uh, and vitamin D. So I have my vitamin D levels checked with my physicals. And anytime I have a blood test to kind of keep it on the more healthy side, you know, keeping your vitamin D levels at a kind of level as uh, cancer preventative and just helps your overall immune system. I take vitamin D every day. Yeah. There's not a lot of things that I take. I, I really keep my supplements to a minimum. Vitamin D, absolutely. That's like number one. Yeah, like that's it's so important, especially working at computers. How much sun yeah. do we really get? Like, yeah. try to get sun, try to be outside, but yeah, no, you got to supplement it. Okay. Yeah, actually, it's interesting because really the only supplement I really take that's a sports supplement, but it's also good for mental cognition is is uh, creatine. Yeah, yeah, that's again also one of the only ones that I take. Yeah, 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 yeah. and creatine is uh, it's inexpensive. It's it's great for gym recovery. It mm -hmm. helps your soreness. It helps. Mental, like you said, cognitive. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. That's one of the main reasons I started back taking it for the, the cognitive effects, getting older, just trying to maintain, you know, good brain health. Did you notice a big difference from taking it, not taking it? I actually think I've, I've noticed a little mental, more mental clarity. I think. Yeah, I feel like I did. I, I, I'm always hesitant. I'm like, am I convincing myself that I am or am I? I'm never, I'm never sure. I feel like it's probably there. I mean, there's studies that say it's there. Definitely mm -hmm. there. Um, but, but yeah, I think, uh, the main thing that I noticed from it is just uh, soreness. Like I don't, I feel like my recovery is better for yeah. sure. And so, but, it, but it's, it's inexpensive, right? Yeah. It's, it's not an expensive supplement and there's all these supplements that are super expensive and supposed to boost your testosterone or X, Y, Z, and they don't really do crap. And, yes. is one of the few that actually does anything that I can actually feel. Exactly. Same here. Same here. Um, yeah, well, uh, that's that's one thing we'd also cover real quick before we before we sign out for the day. Um, we also just talked about we don't really get sick that much. Mm -hmm. Like we we both travel a ton, going to yeah. a ton of conferences around all kinds of people. You're meeting people. You're, I mean, for you know, for me, we're having drinks even, which is gonna, not going to help your immune system. Yeah, we're sitting across the table, and I make sure that I take my vitamin D, my vitamin C anytime I'm doing this, and N acetylcysteine is the other thing that I swear by. I take that every time. And uh, I have never really gotten sick from going to a conference. Yeah, same. Um, the only time I have was when I didn't take anything. I, I kind of left everything at home, didn't really worry about it, went to a customer site for a week, came back, got COVID, you know. That's the only time I've ever had it. I was like, okay, I'm sticking with my, uh, my routine. I think it works. <laughs> yeah, when I'm going to conferences, I actually take a little extra vitamin C that week. Too. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Sure do. Um, well, heck yeah, man. Um, so that's, that's, we, we it might be a super weird topic, you know, for, for this podcast, but it's just something we, we had in common and we were hanging out and I was like, we should just talk about it. You know, I think if we can convince anybody to go out and give, give lifting a try or anything like that, I tell you what, you hit me up. I'm happy to point you to some material or point you some, some directions that could get you started lifting or or get your help started in the, the right direction on some diet stuff or anything like that. So, yeah, cool. Well, thanks for hanging out. And You're welcome. It's chit chat. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to go a, a little bit left turn on the topic and, you know, chat about some, some non-tech related stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everybody for hanging out and I uh, hope you enjoy it.